Okay, welcome to another uh, vlog from my channel. We are going to talk today about obstetric violence because this is a problem that uh, poses danger to women seeking care during pregnancy and childbirth. And the danger comes from the very people who are supposed to provide them protection. I'm Professor Khalid Khan. I'm based at the University of Granada. The paper we are going to talk about is uh, right here in the middle of your screen on the left. And I am lucky to have with me today my colleague, co-author and friend, Dr. Carmen. And uh, to begin with, Carmen, can you please uh, give an introduction about yourself? Yes. First, thank you, Halit, for inviting me to speak to you about this problematic. Um, I am Carmen Amezcua. I am a lecturer uh, in the University of Granada in the Department of Preventive Medicine and Public Health and also coordinator in the Master of Research in Public Health and Preventive Medicine. Uh, this uh, paper we are going to present is a collaboration between the University of Southern Denmark and the University of Granada. Um, and that's it. Okay, so when we talk about women's health and maternal health in particular, we often think about the countries uh, with high mortality rate. Uh, as we know, uh, every second there are four women giving birth some of whom unfortunately do not survive that experience. Uh, but when we talk of uh, obstetric violence, uh, immediately come to light the idea that uh, healthcare providers ought to be reducing risk to the clients who are seeking care from them. Obstetric violence does not yet have a recognized international definition so Carmen, can you comment on what is it that we are talking about in our uh, video today? Yes, we are talking about obstetric violence, uh, but it's more defined as deshumanized care in the delivery or disrespect uh, or abu abuse, and also mistreatment um, of women when they are attending that, that women in the delivery. It could be physical, verbal, or psychological, um, and mainly verbal, some of the, um, of the moments when they are attending the women. Um, we have some examples. For example, Halit, you want to say something about? Yes, so if uh, women are experiencing pain during labor, not providing them with pain control, the lack of analgesia, is a form of... Uh, torture being inflicted on them by the health service. Well, the idea is uh, this type of, uh, of carelessness um, should be uncommon or almost absent in countries that have sufficient resources for their healthcare system. So on this, how did uh, we go about doing this project, Carmen? Well, the idea was between, as I told you before, uh, the University of Southern Denmark and the University of Granada working uh, together. So some of the authors are from that university and some are, uh, we are from the University of Granada. And the first thing was to register the, the project in Prospero. Um, and then uh, we look for uh, reports in several databases and we identified 1,821 records. But finally, uh, we accept 25 because they, they incorporate the criteria that we were interested in with the prevalence of obstetric violence. And they were published between 2019 and 2023. Some of the studies are quantitative, others are qualitative, and few of them are a mix of both. And that imply a lot of women involved in, in these studies. Also, uh, the countries are different or are from high income countries. Um, some of the examples are the ones you can see in, in the screen, like France, Germany, Spain, uh, um, USA, or Italy. Um, 
and the magnitude of the prevalence uh, is what we achieve in all those countries from the quantitative studies. Yes, so it's important to highlight that uh, we are today presenting simply the quantitative data. On uh, another day we will do a video on the qualitative uh, data analysis. Uh, but for now, we will look at the prevalence or the rate of obstetric violence inflicted on mothers giving childbirth in high-income countries. So, for example, nobody expects that when they go into labor ward uh, that they will receive shouting and scolding from their carers, their midwives and their obstetricians, but it appears that nearly one in five uh, women have this uh, negative experience. Carmen, would you like to talk a bit more about uh, pain control? Yes, for example, when women require some analgesia for the pain in the labor, 17% um, don't receive that uh, help with the analgesia. Um, that is a, a problematic because it's not respecting the, the things the woman uh, ordered in that moment. Okay. Well, I also would like to talk a little bit about a specific maneuver used by obstetricians. This is to push the fundus of the uterus uh, at the time of giving birth in the hope of assisting with birth. And in doing so, they put the mother at great risk, including that of uh, lacerations uh, and damage to the birth canal, but also to the rib cage and the possibility of breaking their ribs. One in three women are having this experience in high income countries. This all sounds very dangerous, Carmen. Oh, yes, of course, I agree. Um, sometimes we, are ask, we ask ourselves why these things happen. Um, sometimes uh, because they are well educated. Uh, probably sometimes they have pressure uh, in their work, they are busy, not enough staff to attend everything. So that could be explained all these things. But ultimately what we see here is evidence of uh, lack of consent for undertaking the procedures, uh, some element of coercion and probably all of this is driven by ignorance and lack of attention to detail on part of the care provider. So I guess with apologies on part of uh, my colleagues in the profession, uh, I would like to bring this video to close uh, and thanking Carmen for sharing her time and experience in undertaking this uh, very important piece of work. And with this, we also invite you to make your own comments as to why we are witnessing this phenomena, even in this millennium in high income countries.